Thanks, Miss. So when I was preparing this talk to talk about becoming an idea engine, I realized that I didn't have a whole lot of time to talk about an idea that we could probably spend an entire week talking about. So I wanted to focus down on just one key element. I think it's probably the most important. And the thing I want to talk to you today about is having courage when it comes to sharing your ideas, because that's what we're talking about today. You know, Ted had a lot of courage when they shared the idea for an event like this several years ago and they created the website and put the YouTube channel out there to change so many lives. The TEDx team here had a lot of courage to be able to bring this to corporate, Corpus Christi to give you guys uh, an, a chance to have an event like this that it really is going to become a game changer, I think, in this city. I really believe it. But my talk isn't about TED. It's about you. It's about you and ideas worth spreading. There are these people in the world that they have these ideas. How many people here have a great idea? Right? I get ideas all the time. I probably had six ideas before breakfast this morning. But there's a difference between being an idea generator and being an idea engine. A generator is great, but picture an idea engine. An engine like a, a jet engine or a train engine or a car engine, that actually takes you places. That actually goes somewhere. And so I really want to try and inspire you to stop thinking about all these ideas you're generating and think about in ways, how can I get these ideas and put some wheels on them? How can I get them going places and doing things? Thomas Edison was a pretty young guy when he started to innovate the world around him. He had the luxury of his youth to give him courage to be able to change the things that he saw. It, you know, he was a hard worker and, uh, you know, he had vision. He had sort of a childlike wonder and uh, he had a belief in his abilities. But he also had a perspective and this perspective protected him. It gave him courage that whenever he tried something that he didn't get exactly the right result that he wanted, this perspective gave him a shield that said, go ahead and try again. You know, it was one of those, I'm not failing at this, I'm just finding results that I don't like kind of thing. And so that shield, that perspective was his courage to be able to try again and try different things and different and unique ideas. When I was preparing to give this talk today, uh, like many of you, I went to the internet to research and look up some stuff. I've really kind of been thinking about this space for several years now, so it was kind of easy for me to pull from my experience and my ideas the things that I wanted to talk about. And so, you know, the, the collage that you saw earlier, which by the way, there was something missing from that, and that is a picture of somebody in this room. I'm sure there's some idea engine in this room that someday we'll see in a similar collage at a talk in the future. But I, I was going to the internet to find something that I could really speak to this audience about here in Corpus Christi about what's going on in your local community. And I was really struggling to find it online. And, you know, I'm online all day long. I love getting on there. It's so easy to go and Google something if you want to find what you're looking for. And after several hours of searching, I gave up. I just couldn't take it anymore. I mean, my eyes were going blurry. My fingers were getting all crooked. I decided to go in the other room and I picked up a Reader's Digest. I grabbed it. I opened it right up. And the very first story, I mean, like, how many people, I mean, nobody opens up a Reader's Digest, goes to page one, right? So I've just kind of opened it up to see what story I could find. And in there, I found a story of these two twins from Florida that totally inspired me. These two girls were watching the news, and they were being moved and motivated by an idea to make a difference in the Gulf, because what they were seeing on the news was the BP oil spill. They didn't know that they could change the world in a big way. They were too naive to know that they could change it in a small way. And so what they did was they started with their own community. And out of the 360 homes, this is the Samowitz twins, and out of the 360 homes in their town, they found that 20% of them were recycling. And they thought, well, we can get the others recycling. Let's, let's educate these people. Let's inspire. Let's motivate these people to, to recycle and do something nice for the, for the environment. And they did. And then they started putting on uh, these fairs, these environmental fairs, where they had uh, sponsors like Best Buy and Lexus bringing out you know, hybrid automobiles and taking in recycled electronics. And, and Nike and, and Croc were coming in. People were turning in their shoes. People were turning in their eyeglasses to recycle. And they were getting pretty excited about this. The problem is they are just two twin teenage girls, still in high school. So they need the help of thousands of people that live along the Gulf region to be able to help them clean up these individual communities. So they started a nonprofit, Proceed to Green, and uh, I have been just completely wowed by the work that the two of them have been doing, not to mention the fact that they're both uh, studying Taekwondo and ballet and they play soccer. In fact, in the Reader's Digest article, one of them says, we blink 
and that's what we call sleep. You know, and so it, they're going to need the help of thousands of people along the Gulf region, people like you here in Corpus Christi, to pick up the torch here and meet them halfway. And as I was reading this story, it reminded me of another really big idea, because this is a big idea, cleaning up the Gulf region. And it was kind of reminded of how sometimes a big idea starts small and other people's influences become these other idea engines start to make a difference and create these great big giant ideas. And what I, what I was thinking of was the NASA Apollo missions. So stick with me while I try to equate the uh, cleaning of the Gulf to the NASA uh, missions of the 1960s and 70s. When John Kennedy threw out the mission in 1961 that we're going to go to the moon and come back, he didn't know how we were going to do it. Just 20 days prior to that, we had put one man in space for about 15 minutes in a small suborbital flight. We didn't know if we could send them around the planet. We didn't know if they could stay up there long enough. We didn't know we could even survive in space. But he threw out the mission. We're going to go to the moon and we're going to come back safe. I'm paraphrasing, of course. In order to do that, we were going to need a lot more astronauts. We couldn't just send one up and say, okay, guys, let's build a rocket and send the next guy to the moon. We're going to be good. We had to get equipment, machines that had yet to be invented, fuels that had yet to be discovered to be able to go there. We had to come up with plans, intricate plans that didn't exist. And, and there were multiple options. What's the best one and how do we choose? Could we survive the rigors of space? If the oil needed to be changed on the rocket or you know, the windshield needed to be wiped, could we get out there and do that kind of stuff? Could we rendezvous with another vehicle, which was determined to be the safest way to travel to the moon uh, without smashing into them? Could we build a rocket that could actually escape <coughs> Earth's gravitational pull? We didn't know that back then. And could we build a, uh, a vehicle that could land on the moon even though we could never simulate whether or not we could do that? And all of this work, all of these different people, it wasn't John Kennedy who sat down and said, here's the plan, we'll go to space, you know, we'll, uh, we'll rendezvous. You know, we'll go to the moon and we'll land, we'll come back, it's all good. It took a team of thousands of idea engines, an entire nation lit by an idea to be able to make this come true. And I think, I believe that there are people in this room and people watching this talk that are gonna be the people in the future that are the idea engines that help things, make things like this a reality to create images like this that really inspire us. I was just reading this week that now that we've sent a private commercial rocket to the, uh, to the International Space Station, our next plan is to send astronauts, Americans, humans, all the way to asteroids and even to Mars. So I want to tell you guys a little story in closing about my favorite idea engine. Back in 1966, when Walt Disney was on his deathbed, uh, in, in the book uh, Think Outside the Box by Mike Vance, he illustrates a story about how Walt invited a reporter to lay down next to him on his hospital bed because he was too weak to actually speak aloud. He had to whisper into this reporter's ear. And he had the, the conviction and the courage even then to say, we're going to build this thing called Walt Disney World. And he pointed at the ceiling and he pointed at imaginary castles and imaginary roller coasters and imaginary train depots where things were going to happen. And he spent this 30 minutes with this reporter literally telling him about what we were all going to see at Walt Disney World. Six years later, when Walt Disney World was finished, somebody mentioned to the crowd, isn't it a shame that Walt isn't, isn't here to see this, that he didn't live to see this? In which Mike Vance says, no, if he hadn't seen it, we wouldn't be seeing it. And so he had the courage, he had the vision, and he had the idea to be an idea engine so strong that six years even after he died, his visions became a reality. So to kind of borrow from John Kennedy, I want to commit this room to taking your wildest ideas, your biggest dreams, and I want you to achieve them before the decade is out. And I want you to take those ideas and share them with your friends so that they can help you become an idea engine to connect to yours. And I want you to ask your friends what their greatest ideas are, and I want you to help them share them too. Thank you very much.